Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you stumbled upon this video, my name is Brett Tadlock, or TN Artist, here and about everywhere else online. Uh, and this is part four of a workshop on painting an Irish Shepherd, the landscape around him, uh, his dog, and the sheep that they're herding. And it's all done using Art Rage. So if you're just stumbling upon this, make sure you've watched parts one through three to see how we reached to this point. Now, as I've mentioned before in other videos, you can get all the files and brushes needed for this painting from the links below. And you can click on my Patreon link there as well. When you do, you'll have hours more of digital painting lessons for really three bucks a month. So can't beat that. It really helps me with making content. So that's it. Okay, let's roll that intro. Okay, so we've got a lot of this stuff put in here, and we just need to tidy up some stuff here on this before we work on the road a little bit. So what I want to do is put uh, maybe like a small rock here, and then build out these grasses coming down through here that you can, especially the ones that you can see like back through here um, and here. So let's do that real quick. And we'll build it on the same layer for here. So I'm going to grab some of this green, go a little bit over, and go back to my pen. And actually, I may go ahead and just do a different layer. And then soften some of these out, like we did previously. Really just trying to get rid of that little end there. here I for our stuff for ink tool okay let's change to the smooth inking because I want some of these to definitely overlap and not be transparent so There's really, you can get and make grass brushes, but to be honest, it just always tends to look better, at least to me, if it's done by hand. And it doesn't take real long to do this, it's just a matter of doing it. And it's really kind of good for your learning brush control and learning to manipulate it so that you can get something that looks good. So I don't recommend using a stamp 
for these. You can. I've seen some people do it, and it's they turn out okay. Um, but I just I don't know. I just kind of like doing it this way personally. But if you want to try it with a brush of your own, make a brush, buy a brush, then do it. Not gonna stop you. Kind of paying attention where these sheep are because they're going to be. Just a little bit of a some more scrub. So flowers are called, but they're like these little puffs of flower, and I kind of think they're cool. I went to eraser mode, I don't know if you noticed that or not, but I clicked eraser mode. So it's the exact same brush, it just deletes stuff from it versus adding it. And I do that because Let's me soften it back, but add a little bit of interest. Like so. so. Just a little something else to go in the background. Okay. Alright. So now we've got that, so let's look at doing our road. Okay. Now for our road, I'm going to come up here. You can use a number of brushes to do this. There's not a right brush or a wrong brush per se. It's just a matter of doing it. So I'm going to use some of these other brushes that I made, like the acrylic dry brush. Brush some of in, but watch that start a new layer. Can I add those in. You've heard me talk before about vignetting, so I want to kind of vignette this in a little bit so that it pulls your eye to the lighter items that are on. The um, painting. Now, this embankment could be just covered with that, or it could be where it comes down and kind of slopes in like so. And if you're going to do that, it's just these little comma strokes like this. Okay. So just a stroke like that is all we're doing. Okay. 
just building that up. The layers. Banklet. Okay. Now I want to. I'm going to use a stencil. And Gumroad stencils. There is a Pebbles stencil. So we're going to use this. You can use the dots to do a similar. But I kind of like this one. And we're going to say layer. And we're going to go to the. Actually, I want to do something else first. Before we do that, we're going to go here. We're going to select this. So, I got a little off there. So, select like so. So now I'm inside the picture. And I don't have to worry about going outside. So, I can go a little bit bigger. Although, something else I just realized. I forgot to do. Let's go back to here. Let's do Alt and then kind of roughly draw in around there. So now we got our road selected. Okay. So go with an older, grab a little bit darker brownish gray. Do that in. Right click. Hide the stencil. Okay. And then we'll take custom brush, textures, particles, spatter in a little bit more, reduce down the opacity, go with a little bit of a bluish kind of color just to change it up. lighter yellowish color again just to kind of change it up like so control D to deselect now we can take Palette knife, a little bit smaller. Really zoom in and just kind of soften a few of these here and there. Kind of set them back in the dirt ever so slightly. I know that's probably hidden by that guy, but that's just bothering me. If it does show through, it's going to look weird that it's on the road. So I'm just getting rid of a little bit of it. There we go. Anyway, just something. So, control click to select all those. And then we can go with something like the marker tool. We can go darker. Kind of highlight them here and there to add a little bit of a shadow. You can also go below it, make a new layer, and really fill that in with the dark. Then you can do Control Alt T, which oops, Trying to zoom out, and that's it acted a little weird there. All right, so now we've got that. Just kick it over ever so slightly to the right. Okay. Control D, and then Control B is blur. Yeah, we'll just leave that at four pixels. Tell it okay. And then we're going to opacity down ever so slightly. One mode. Apply. 
And what that did was give us just really soft, subtle shadows for some of these good ones. Just a quick way to do it. Not necessarily the best way, but a way. Okay, so that gives us that. And then what we can do is if you want, you can come back in here and go to the custom brushes, go to watercolor brush, go down to four, select a highlight color, like this brown, come over, shrink this down, zoom in a little bit, go over top of some of these rocks. You can even switch that to overlay. Just highlight a few here and there. And the reason I'm using the watercolor brush is just because it gives them just a random texture. A little bit more randomized. And you can use use any of these if you wanted to. You could even come over here and if you've downloaded this one, the pasta brush. You can even use it. To and play around with it. This mountain brush works really good for it as well. And just kind of color in a few of these here and there. Soften it out. Like so. Upside down. So now we've got kind of the road here. I need to bring back my guy just to make sure to look at these ruts that I have here. Because I kind of drew those in perspective, so I wanted to see those. Now, if I'm going to do those, just make another layer over top, grab a little bit of this darker color, and you can again just kind of that same comma shape and just kind of quickly rough it in like so pick a little bit lighter color some of the surrounding color that then take your eraser tool instant erase works better for this one and then just kind of soften it out I also think that maybe the cloud brush works really well for this you can kind of blend with it as you're going zoom it out and then play around with the road a little bit more. You can also change the blend mode to multiply, lower your opacity like so. Then come back and kind of soften some of these edges, like so. Erase some stuff here and there. Set it down in there, like so. Let's zoom in a little bit. Percent. All right, and we can kind of paint 
working on a little bit more of this rut. Make it really kind of rough. I'm thinking this would be like a really rough, you know, uh, wagon trail or something like that. add in. What I'm doing here is I'm just adding in some textures and then kind of softening it back. So that it really kind of blends in a little more. Is this really a um, nicer seating of it? Okay. So let's zoom that back out a little bit. Okay, it'll give us kind of a nice area for that guy to be walking and we'll add shadows under him and we'll add I think we'll add some puddles and stuff here as well but that gives us a good start for that underpainting as well so um, let me save this real quick and then let's paint in some of these guys here okay so I'm gonna merge this down We've got that there. I think I'm going to go ahead and merge it down again. That those are really sitting on there now. And actually, let's go ahead and merge Control Alt Down Arrow, Control Alt Down Arrow, Control Alt Down Arrow. We've got all those merged together now into one layer, like so, which I think works. Now let's put a layer above it, and using our guy for the reference here, we're going to go back to our gouache brush, blue, kind of a dark blue, and that's too purpley. Let's go a little bit grayer. Yeah. All right, and kind of get this laid in here. For where he's gonna be. Let me get this guy kind of set in there really well. Look at his jacket. Hat. Like so, collar coming up. See a one cool shepherd. There we go. Have kind of some leather boots on, but I want them to be a little bit distinct from what's around it, so I'll go with this. too, but I want to be a little bit wider than these. Here's the color I want.
some of that up in a minute. I don't want it to look like he's had an accident there while he's out tending the sheep. Alright. Lighter skin tone. He's Irish. And those of us who are European skin. Go back and make these lighter, but you don't ever start white out with white. You always start with the darker color. And we'll come back and change some of this, but I'm just trying to get him get the feel of him in here. A little bit darker. Where he'll be, and the same with black. You don't ever go black with black. Because if you go all the way to a dark black or a light white, you have nowhere else to go from there. And you have no interest. Nothing that looks good. My dog is part Great Pyrenees and is nothing but a big fluff ball, so. That's what I'm thinking about here while I'm painting this guy. Let's see now, by having some of that in there, I can start to kind of pull some of this together. Like so. Play around with where his shadows will be. And I, again, I'm not trying to get to the finish here. I'm just trying to put some notes here, basically, for how I want to lay in his shadows. that. Now then for these sheep. This brush is going to work really well for this. You're probably thinking, Brad, these are black sheep. What are you doing? Doing just what I just said I was going to do. Not starting with white. So we can come back and refine these, but again, I just want to kind of get them started. So we have an idea of how it looks, where it's going to go, what we're going to see.
for a lot of these, it's going to just be implied where it is. We're not going to paint every little bit of these sheep because if I can get the first ones over here, these guys, to look like sheep, your brain will assume that these are sheep over here and be like, oh, it's sheep. just need it enough where I can work with it. And this cloud brush works great because, you know, wool, clouds, cotton. All that kind of stuff has that fluffy look. You ain't fat, you fluffy. start seeing where it's pulling together. Great. So in there and starting to get it to look good. All right, so we've got the underpainting there, we've got the underpainting here. We've kind of pulled some of this together. Still, I think a little bit more to do on that and some more to do on the background as well. But the nice thing about it is, is that if we turn off the sketch, we can see where the painting's going. So we'll keep pushing on this. I'm going to go ahead and save this and then we'll push on the next one.